You're listening to Join the Morning, your morning show. I'm Joy Curry, and this is WETN, Wheaton College Radio. We have a special guest in studio. This is uh, part two of a new series that we're doing with Pastor Rob Reno, family pastor of Wheaton Bible Church, also founder of Visionary Parenting, and an author of the book of the same title, which I am now holding in my hands right here, Visionary Parenting, Capture a God-Sized Vision for Your Family. I think every family wants a God-sized vision, Pastor Rob. Amen. Thanks, Joy, for having me back. Yeah, thanks for coming back. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah? Yeah. I, fine. I was looking at your website, uh, visionaryparenting.com, and I took a look at your, your travel schedule, and I thought, oh, my goodness, he's been everywhere since I last saw him. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Well, it is exciting. You know, one of the things that's happening with, with just churches around the country is that people are kind of waking up to the primary role of parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles in the home. And wow. for the last few decades, a lot of us have been sort of doing the drop your kids off at church and we'll take care of it. And now mm. churches are catching the biblical vision of helping parents pass faith to their kids at home. So it's exciting. It w- was not a primary role at all before. And, uh, and, and that's the, the kind of thing that you are... Uh, teaching us and, and encouraging us in. I understand there is a conference coming to Wheaton Bible this November that is along those lines. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, we've got the Chicagoland uh, Parenting Vision and Strategy Conference coming. It's going to be November 13th and 14th, Friday night and Saturday. Uh, it's being sponsored by the National Center for Biblical Parenting with a guy named Scott Taransky. And uh, Scott's the author of a lot of books on, on parenting, and our church is thrilled to partner with him. And it is for parents and grandparents of kids of all ages. Um, any parent who wants to get some more parenting skills, but particularly for parents who um, they want to pass faith and character to their kids. Uh, they want their kids to love God. They want their kids to follow God, and they want to put together a plan uh, for how to do that to the best of their ability. There's no magic formulas. There's no quick fixes. Um, but the Parenting Vision and Strategy Conference, there's about 30 churches from Wisconsin to Indiana that are partnering with us and, uh, and bringing people. And uh, all the information is at the Wheaton Bible website, wheatonbible.org. Uh, you can also find it at biblicalparenting.org. Uh, and then my website, too, visionaryparenting.com. So lots of places on the web to, to find it. 30 churches, that's a lot. Yeah. They're, they've all come together. That that's wonderful. So we've we've got people listening uh, throughout Chicago land and perhaps in Indiana and Wisconsin and that and that sort of thing. And and this is definitely uh, worth the the uh, short drive to come together with many others. The Vision and Strategy Conference, uh, the Parenting Vision and uh, Strategy Conference at Wheaton Bible in West Chicago, November thirteenth through the 14th. Very exciting. We'll continue to talk about that and remind people about that and uh, give them all kinds of good information. Uh, We are speaking with Pastor Rob Reno, family pastor of Wheaton Bible, founder of Visionary Parenting. When you were here last month, you talked to us about worshiping with your family. Fancy that. (laughs) <laughs> we in this Christian uh, culture that we live in, we're we're big on worship, but you don't often hear people talking about having worship time with their family. Yeah, yeah well, family worship um, for for centuries has been uh, the centerpiece, really, of um, of the Christian spiritual life. With built on this mm-hmm. idea, kind of that who we are at home is who we really are. And it comes from Deuteronomy mm-hmm. chapter six is the primary text where Jesus says this is the most important commandment in the whole Bible where it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mm-hmm. soul, with all your strength. Uh, and people look at that and they say, well, that's great. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? In other words, what does it really mean to love God? What are the practical steps that you take? And in Deuteronomy 6, the next few verses, it says, uh, these commands that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts, impress them on your children, and talk about them when you sit at home. And so in those few verses, we, it starts with this global love God. I'll say, okay, God, we want to love you. What do you want us to do? Well, what I want you to do is I want you to talk about me when you sit at home. Wow. And down through the centuries, that's been called family worship. It's not complicated or weird. It's just when the people in a home, the aunts and the uncles, grandmas, grandpas, moms, dads, get together, pray together, open the Bible together, um, and they view their family as their primary discipleship small group. There's all these buzzwords in the church today about we need to do life together. We need discipleship happens in the context of relationships. And um, I believe the Bible teaches that um, if if there's people to do life with, 
That's the people at your home. If you're looking for authentic, real relationships, go home. You'll find authentic <laughs> relationships there. I love that. Every day, go home, and uh, it, it's it makes sense that God would kind of build in that small group okay. for us, and and I'm sure the personalities and and all of that um, are crafted by Him and how they all come together, mm-hmm. uh, and and all that you need is is right there. He's already made that provision for us. We're speaking with Pastor Rob Reno from Wheaton Bible Church. Um, and so, so this whole idea of, uh, of, of family worship, uh, I'm sure can look many different ways depending on who's in the family and the age of, of the kids and, and that sort of thing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what that looks like for people that have, uh, teens in their household. Absolutely. Well, if you start family worship when kids are real little, uh, their hearts get accustomed to it. They get comfortable with it. It just becomes part of their routine. They ask for it. Hey, when are we doing family worship? When can we sit down to, to talk? Have you seen that in your family? Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, little kids want to be close to their parents. That's just a natural thing yeah. that they, they want. And they want to um, be blessed by the parents. They want to talk about meaningful things with their parents. Uh, but unfortunately, in a lot of our, our families, um, things get so crazy and so busy. The years go by and then what happens is we realize we've got teenagers, and now they're starting to make decisions that are pretty big. You know, little first yeah. graders are not making a lot of life and death decisions, but mm-hmm. teenagers are. And uh, parents then sometimes kind of freak out. Oh, my goodness, I have got to, my kid needs advice. My kid needs help. They're making this decision, this decision. And um, it's never too late for a parent to connect deeply with the heart of their teenager. Unfortunately, say that again. Yeah, it's, it's never, it's never too, too late. late. That's for a, huge yeah, for a parent to connect yeah. deeply. Um, but it feels like it sometimes you yeah. see what, what happens is, and, and um, this is a really predictable common thing in our, in our culture today. I believe that the, the main thing that Satan wants to do in the relationship between a parent and a child is to break their heart connection, mm. to break their heart connection. Uh, to take away closeness, to take away warmth, openness, and honesty. And with the families that I work with, and even in my home, I think you see this attack really frequently in middle school. So fourth grade, fifth grade, and then getting into middle school, uh, you start to see um, the attack on the parent-child relationship. Let me give you an example, and I'll give you kind of an example of a Christian family. Let's say that the mom picks uh, her son up from youth group, junior high night or whatever at church. Mm -hmm. And the kid flops in the front seat of the car, and mom says, how was youth group tonight? What does the boy say? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he he mumbles me, fine, whatever. And then she'll say, you know, well, what did you learn tonight? And he'll say, uh, he'll mumble, I don't know. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. nothing. And, and what's going on right there in, in that car, I yeah. believe, is spiritual attack. The spiritual attack on the son goes something like this. He's sitting there, and mom's being great. I mean, mom's just asking pleasant, nice questions, taking an interest in her son. She's not doing anything wrong. But the the attack on the son in that moment is do not give your heart to your mother. Wow. You want to talk to your friends about this stuff? Fine. You want to talk to your youth pastor about this stuff? Fine. Don't. Mom's not the one to talk to about this. Now, over in the driver's seat, there's also Mm. an attack going on, and the attack is this. The attack is the myth of adolescence. The myth of adolescence. The myth of adolescence. And here's what goes through mom's mind. As they sense her son is sort of bristling. Yeah. Right? As mom is trying to have a spiritual conversation, he's getting very edgy. And so the thoughts going through mom's mind are, oh, yeah, this is what they told me was going to happen during these years. Mm -hmm. That from the ages of 12 to 30, my kid's going to be a blithering idiot. (laughs) He's not going to want to have anything to do with me. He's not going to want to have anything to do with church and religion. He's going to go sow his wild oats and he's going to have a stinky attitude. And it's my job as a parent just to white knuckle it and hold on for dear life. And maybe, you know, by some random happenstance, we'll can have a relationship again someday. Goodness. Years down the line. Exactly, And that is really the vision that parents have of the teen years And that's the vision we give to teenagers. That's the expectations that we set for them, that these are the years as a culture we expect you to be a disaster. This is how it is. We just have to deal with it. Right. And so what do our teens do? They're very good at living up to expectations, (laughs) right? Good point. And so the mom then in that situation, she she also then retreats and withdraws Mm. because she says she believes these lies like friends are more important now. Lie. Hmm. nobody's more important than mom and dad. I, I think of it, there's an illustration I use. Um, imagine, Joy, you were going to climb Mount Everest, okay? Okay. And you uh, have paid your $60,000 to, 
to Ooh. the Sherpas who are going to carry all your gear. These are the guys in the loincloths, right, who yeah. climb barefoot and carry everything for you. And on Everest, um, you get up to 26,000 feet. Now, Everest is 29,000 feet. And from 26 to 29,000 feet, that's the death zone. If you're going to die on Everest, that's where you're going to die. So you get up to 26,000 feet. You're doing great. And your Sherpa looks at you and says, Joy, you're amazing. You're in amazing shape. You haven't even broken a sweat climbing this mountain. Of course. You're, of course. <laughs> you're doing so well, in fact, that we are going to go back down to base camp and we are going to let you finish from here. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> now, why, why not? You're doing so great. What's the big deal? This is the most important time. This, this is when is I really the need their Look, help. I didn't yeah. pay you $60,000 to get me from base camp to 26,000. Yeah. I paid you to get me from 26,000 to the top. And when it comes to parenting, that's the teen years. Wow. So so to withdraw is to leave that teen on their own to get to the top, to when finish the journey. When they need you more than they've ever needed you before. Oh, man. I love that illustration. We're speaking with Pastor Rob Reno, family pastor of Wheaton Bible Church, founder of Visionary Parenting, author of the book Visionary Parenting. And this is good stuff. This is uh, stuff that Pastor Rob is uh, living out in his own life. He uh, has dedicated his life to his family, and uh, they they worship together. How many kids do you have now? We have been blessed with five children, and there is one on the way in six weeks. One on the way. Oh, my goodness. And and how how many boys and girls do you have? We have two boys and three girls. Our order is boy, girl, boy, girl, (gasps) girl. Oh, and then we don't know the next one. Almost Brady Bunch. <laughs> so it's either going to be three to three boys to girls or four to two girls to boys. Now, my sons are hoping for twin boys, <laughs> which would catapult the boys past the girls in one fell swoop. But we don't think that's going to happen. So it, That remains to be seen. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Baby, we're, we're baby number six on the way. Uh, so, so, Pastor Rob, this adolescence thing, it's a lie. It's a myth. It doesn't have to go that way. Well, here's the deal. Is it common that young people hit bumps in the road during these years? Sure. Yeah. That's really common. But the idea of adolescence, the theory of adolescence, says, is that this is a healthy, necessary rite of passage that you're supposed to, that it's a good thing to go through these years of total separation from home and values, et cetera. Um, I, I think, you know, if you read the textbooks, here would be the place that I would disagree. The textbooks say that the task of adolescence, and sort of technical here, is individuation. In other words, the, the challenge the young person faces is becoming their own person. Uh. I don't buy it. The task of adolescence is identification. Who What's will the they difference? identify with? Ah. Think of a, let's think of a, we'll pick on girls again. Think of a freshman girl. She goes to freshman year of high school. She finds a little group, right? Mm-hmm. And she goes with those girls and she dresses like those girls and talks like those girls. Mm-hmm. And then maybe around Christmas time, things blow up with those girls. And so she gets rid it's of them. a new group. And she picks a new group. Yeah. Now, what, is she trying to become an individual? No, she's trying on different identities. Identification. Who is she going to identify with? And as Christian parents and as Christian churches, what we want to invite our teenagers into is to say, You're, what we want to invite you to do is to identify with us. Will you, you're about to become an adult. Would you are, our invitation to you is identify with the faith of your mother, with the faith of your father. Identify with your church so that we can launch you into the mission that God has for you in this world. Now, is there anything that people outside of the family, I'm thinking of uh, youth group leaders, I'm thinking of you know, just close friends and neighbors, is there anything that they can be doing to, to kind of assist a, a family that they know in, in, in this absolutely, process? Absolutely, absolutely. The very best thing that you can do for families in your life, when you're speaking with parents, the very best thing you can do is to encourage them to turn their heart to their teenager. In other words, it, the, every time I walk out the door of my house, I am pulled uh, away. My heart's pulled away from focusing on the ministry that God's given me, primarily with my wife and children and then at church. So my heart's always pulled into uh, doing my hobbies. My heart's always pulled. So if you have your friends who are parents, are you encouraging them to make it the number one mission of their life to pass faith and character to their kids? Now, if you have relationships with the teenager, let's say you're a youth pastor, you're a teacher, well, well what do you do with them? you encourage them to give their hearts to their parents. 
And so you're the matchmaker when you're you're always pushing hmm. the parents toward the child. You're always pushing the child toward the parents. For example, let me give you an example. What what some of our youth pastors will do at Wheaton Bible Church, they'll finish um, a, a youth group event, a youth group morning, and the youth pastor will have taught from the Bible and given the students some challenges and application areas. And frequently, what he'll say is, "Now the very first thing you need to do." with what you just heard today is you need to go tell everything you just learned to your parents. Oh, that's you need to open good. up your heart to your mom, open up your heart to your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your grandma, your grandpa, whoever plays that role in your life. Mm -hmm. Give them your heart. One of the most powerful parenting scriptures in the Bible is from Proverbs twenty three twenty six. Proverbs twenty three twenty six is written from Solomon to his son where it says, my son, give me your heart. <gasps> give me your heart. Oh, that's so good. As Christ, you know, Christians talk about giving our heart to Jesus, right? But that phrase is not in the Bible. I know I'm not down on it. We, I know uh -huh. what we mean. It's, uh -huh. it's believe in Jesus, trust Jesus. But there is a phrase in the Bible of who you're supposed to give your heart to, and God wants and children to give parents. their hearts to their parents because it's their parents' job to pass their heart to Jesus. This is good stuff. We're talking to Pastor Rob Reno, family pastor of Wheaton Bible and founder of Visionary Parenting. Can people find these, this kind of information on your website? Absolutely. Yep. Visionaryparenting.com. Visionaryparenting.com is the website. I, I have a feeling that uh, some of these topics will also come up at that conference in November that we were talking about. Uh, there is a Chicago area parenting vision and strategy conference. Uh, Wheaton Bible Church is hosting it, uh, as is the National Center for Biblical Parenting and Visionary Parenting. Uh, November 13th through 14th, you can go to any of those websites, WheatonBible.org, uh, BiblicalParenting.org, or VisionaryParenting.com for more information. We'll continue to talk about that. And this is an ongoing conversation. We will continue it next month. Uh, Pastor Rob is coming back, and there's so much to talk about. Uh, you mentioned that, um, that, that it's never too late no. for, for families to connect like this, Pastor Rob. Uh, what about uh, empty nesters that have grown up kids? Yeah. Is it too late then? It, it is never too late. You it see, the, the power that God built into the heart connection between parents and children never goes away. Mm. And what, what we found at Wheaton Bible Church, and in fact in churches around the country where we're surveying this, two out of three empty nest Christian parents, okay, two out of three of our empty nest Christian parents, mm -hmm. have at least one child, grown child, who is not converted or not walking with the Lord. Really? Two, Two out, out of, of three. Every three. It is wow. a colossal problem in the church, and wow. very few people are talking about it. And the reason we're not talking about it is because it hurts so much. Mm -hmm. You know, these folks are walking around our churches. They're hearing sermons about evangelizing their neighbors. They're hearing sermons about, you know, global missions, all of which is wonderful. And they're, and they're sitting there, and they have one of their own children, 25, 30, 35 years old, struggling with faith. Wow. And it's never too late. The, the shortest distance, if, that, if, if you're listening right now and you're in that situation, um, the shortest distance between your child's heart and Christ is you. It's you. It's, it's your opportunity uh, still to try to rebuild and restore and reconnect a heart connection with your grown child. Uh, and then through that heart connection, God can still use you to, to point them toward Christ. We have a, a new ministry called Never Too Late, Encouraging Faith in Your Adult Children. Really? At Wheaton Bible Church? Yep. And all the ministries on my website, that's a new book coming out next year. And, um, and, uh, and it's that's a it. huge need. And so we can find more information at visionaryparenting.org. Yeah. What a great doc, ministry. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, dot com. Visionaryparenting.com is that website. Pastor Rob Reno, family pastor of Wheaton Bible. Uh, and also founder of Visionary Parenting, and what a what a great message uh, to uh, to pass on. It's never too late. So encouraging. Well, thank you once again for encouraging us, and we look forward to continuing this conversation in October. Pastor Rob will be back. If you have any questions for him, uh, because I, I'm thinking of all kinds of things. Like I said, this conversation needs to and will continue on. Um, feel free to send him an email or send us an email at wetn at wheaton edu, and we will talk with him again in a month. Family pastor of Wheaton Bible Church, now in West Chicago, and founder of Visionary Parenting, Pastor Rob Reno. Such a pleasure. And uh, as Pastor Rob was talking, I could not get this song out of my head. It's so perfect for what we're talking about. Saint Disreal has a song called We Need Each Other. And that's just exactly what we've been discussing today. You're listening to Joy in the Morning, your morning show. I'm Joy Curry, and this is WETN.